Hello and welcome to this video. Now, what I want to do in this video is to just illustrate the difference between MATLAB scripts and MATLAB functions. Um, now, MATLAB, MATLAB has, if you want, two types of programs that you could have. They could be a script or they could be functions. Now, you could also have live scripts and live functions, but effectively they're just scripts or functions that are formatted and, and presented differently. So you could have a script or you could have a function. Now, MATLAB has a workspace. A work, the workspace is where it keeps its all variables in the present work session. Those are kept inside a region called the workspace. The command window is where you type in commands if you are not using a program. But if you wanted to call a program, you could call it from the command window. So let's go ahead and create a MATLAB program. To create a MATLAB program, um, you could go through several methods. But the method I will often use is just to type edit at the command window. Um, so edit at the command window. Now you could have come to your toolbar and clicked on new script or click on new live script if you wanted to make a live script. So you could click on new script, new live script. It doesn't really matter. Um, now what if you wanted to create a function and not a script? Well, it's more or less still the same thing. Just click on new script and effectively you will come up with a new function. Um, okay, or you could click on this new here. You click on this drop down here. It gives you a, a menu where you could actually decide what you want. You want to create a script, you want to create a function, a live script, live function. You might want to create a class, a system object. All of these we will not talk about in this. If you wanted to create a figure, you wanted to create a GUI, an application entirely that maybe you want to install um, or you want to have a, create an executable file that you can run elsewhere. You create a Simulink model, state flow, chart, um, Simulink project. All of that we will not talk about in this project um, or in this video. All we're interested in for now are scripts and functions. So we want to create a new script. Now, the method I will always suggest for creating scripts or functions is to type edit, space, and then whatever name you want to collect and uh, call your scripts. So let me call this um, sample scripts. Okay. Now, the reason why I suggest this is whenever you type edit, space, whatever um, name you want, MATLAB will try to open up a file that has that name. If that file exists, it will open it up. If the file does not does not exist, it will ask you if you want to create it. Why is that significant? Let's say I wanted to, to create a, um, a file to plot variables, and I want to plot them in a specific way that I am interested in in my own project. I could create a file called plot. I could create a MATLAB program called plot. The only problem is that when I'm done with that particular project, let's say I go to a different project and I want Mat to use MATLAB's own plot function. Which function would it use? The one I created in my previous project or the present one? Well, the answer to that actually is it depends on where I save that my own plot file. It depends on where I save it. If it's in my current folder, whenever I type the plot command, it will use my own function and not MATLAB's own function. So whenever I'm creating a, a function of my own, I like to know that that function does not exist. So for instance, if I type edit plot, just taking the example I just picked just now, if I type edit space plot, this opens up MATLAB's own command for plot. Okay, now this happens to be um, their documentation for plot. Um, the actual command on how plot, plotting works is not inside this file. But just take note that that actually will happen. And um, if I want to avoid that, what I'll do is edit sample script. Now I'm going to run this. If this file already exists, MATLAB will tell me. And then I may decide to choose a different name so that I don't run into confusion later in the future. Let's try this. It tells me it does not exist. Do I want to create it? Yes, create this. So it has created it. Now I have a blank script. Now I'll go ahead and dock this. I'll dock the editor, editor here so that we can see MATLAB's workspace while I do things. Now inside this um, inside this script, I'm just going to do a, a, a couple of simple things. A is equal to th 3. B is equal to soon. C is equal to minus 5. And then D is equal to, say, A plus B, sorry. A plus B squared minus C cubed. Okay, so I just simply run that. I'll simply save that and then I'll go ahead and run it. Now, when I go, go ahead and run this, notice that MATLAB workspace was clear before. Now the workspace is no longer clear. Now it has all these values in there and these values came from um, what we had in here. You could just do this computation and you arrive at them 3, 2, minus 5, and whatever this gives us is 132. So this works. And note that whenever I run this function, it affects MATLAB workspace. So that if I change one of these values here, it will affect MATLAB's workspace. That value in there changed. This value didn't change because we are squaring B here. So that value did not change. 
Also notice that in MATLAB's command window, when I clicked on run here, it is the same thing as typing the file name, sample script. It's the same thing as typing the file name here, that will run it. In case you don't, in, in, okay, it wasn't obvious just now, so let me clear my workspace. Let me clear the command window as well. I type sample script and notice my workspace. So it ran this program and now the workspace was affected. So I'll go ahead and clear my workspace one more time. And let me now create a function, okay? So what I'm gonna do is create another function. Let me copy all this code and I'll create a function called edit sample function. It does not exist, do I wanna create it? Yes, create it. Okay, so in here I have that. But now if I want to create a MATLAB function, I must start with the keyword function. It must start with the keyword function. So that way MATLAB knows it's a function. Now it's asking me, what is the name of the function? Name of the function is sample function. Okay, now I'll go ahead and save this. Now if I run this function, so let's type it in here, sample function. If I type it in here and I run, it runs. How do we know it runs? Well, because it didn't pull out an error. Since it didn't throw any error, it means that it ran. But if it ran and it didn't display anything, um, I don't understand what is going on, okay? So let me go ahead and display something in here. Let's say display D. Let me do a little more than that. Let's simply say, um, okay, so we can use the display command. And if I remember well, let me use the S print F command. And simply say, in, instead, let me say, um, um, the value of D is, and then I want this to be a, a um, an integer, let's see, and put in D. Now this percent D is supposed to simply um, display a decimal, uh, a, an integer, oh, not an integer, a number. I want this to be a number. I hope I got that format correct. Let's try this out and see if that works. Run, and now, so it displays that on the command window. Now, this is one beautiful way you can um, do things. Let me type in this same command, but this time not using sprintf. sprintf is the more elegant way to do this because it gives you granularity. It makes you able to, um, to um, control exactly how things look. Let me use the display command. If I was to use the display command instead, then I will have to make this an array and I will have to do a couple of more things. So the value of D is, now D is, an in, is, is, a, is, a, des, is a double in digit. So this percent D stands for double, okay? This percent D stands for double, okay? So D is actually a, a cl of class double, and it is not a string. What you have over here is a string. Now, if I'm trying to concatenate two strings together, remember this is how you can just literally put two, let's say this was two and that was three, we could make an array using that, okay? So a string is effectively just an array. So I'm trying to build an array that has two strings in it. This is a string, so I have to make this a string, but presently it is a number. So I'll use the command num number to string. So convert this number to a string and then concatenate it together. So I'll go ahead and run this. Notice this first one said ANS is equal to that. In this case, and when I just run this one, it displays it over here. So it effectively displays the same thing, um, but then sprintf um, did something. Let me see, let me change this to fprintf. Yeah, okay, so fprintf instead does not tell you that ANS is equal to that. So sprintf is used for build, creating a string, so I could have written that value to a variable and kept it somewhere. Um, let me do one more thing. Let's um, put a um, slash n here so that that's a new line um, character so that it now goes to the next line. Okay, so it displays this twice. So we see our function is running, but what I'm interested in you seeing is that the workspace is empty. Now, this is a big difference between a script and a function. A script has, um, a script does not use MATLAB's workspace. A, sorry, a script uses MATLAB's workspace. It uses whatever is inside the workspace. It, it's, in fact, so let me just show, let me change this example up a little bit. Let me say minus X. Now, what is X? We did not define X inside this script, but let me say I have defined X as being equal to three, or let's use something else, three I, yeah. Let's use a complex number instead. Let's say x is equal to 3i. So in my workspace, I have x being 3i. Inside this program, I do not have x being anything. x is not defined at all. But if I run this program, sample script, if I run the program, it runs perfectly well. It does not complain about x because it read x from the workspace. So every script uses MATLAB's workspace and writes to MATLAB's workspace. On the other hand, a function does not use MATLAB's workspace. It does not read it, it does not write to it. 
Okay, it does not read it, it does not write to it. Now let me do something in here. Let me type in this command clear. Okay, inside the function. Now what does clear do? Clear clears the workspace. And let me run the sample function. I go ahead and run sample function. Notice that it executed the code, but my workspace, my MATLAB workspace was not cleared because a, every function has its own private workspace. This function has its private workspace, so when it executed this command, it simply executed it on its own private workspace. It did not affect MATLAB's workspace at all. It does not read MATLAB's workspace. It does not write to MATLAB's workspace, okay? So a function does not read or write to MATLAB's workspace. So now begs the question, what if I want to take a value from outside? For example, when we type in the command mean of an array, when we type in this command, find the mean of an array, we are apparently are reading something. The, the function is able to take in a parameter and give out something, okay? So it's like it can take something in and it can give something out. Yes, you can define a function to take in um, a variable from the workspace or from when you're commanding it, you can tell it to take in an input parameter and you can define it to give out an input parameter as well. But a function has its own workspace, nothing leaves or enters a function other than what you specify can leave or can enter. So if you want to define an output for this function, then we could define an output. You define the output here within, um, it could be inside um, square brackets or not. If you have just one, let's say it's just D, you want to be the output, then this is perfectly fine. But if you wanted to have more than one parameter coming out, then you could put them inside square brackets, okay? You could have several parameters, it doesn't have to be just one. The order in which you put them here matters. Because um, as far as this function is concerned, it will write D as its first output, it will write C as the second output, it will write A as its third output, okay? That order matters. So in this case, this particular function now gives out three outputs, but does not take in any inputs, okay? If we go ahead and run it, if I just simply say sample function and run, it only takes, it only displays one thing. That is the first of the outputs. If I want to access the, all the other outputs, I will need to specify, um, I will need to assign them to um, variables. So I could say x1, x2, x3. Now, when MATLAB calls this function, sample function, when it returns, when the, value, when the, the function is returning values, the first answer that comes out, the first value that is returned will be assigned to x1. The second value that is returned will be assigned to x2. The third value that is returned will be assigned to x3. These names do not have to match what is inside the function. When you are calling the function, you do not need to know anything about the inside of the, of the function. The only thing you need to know is how should I call it. Once you know how to call it and what's the order in which the answers will be. So D was the first, B was the second, uh, sorry, C was the second, and A was the third. So one, three, two, minus five, and three. That's what you get. And that is perfectly fine, okay? That is perfectly fine. So that is a big difference between a sample, between a function and a script. Let me go ahead and just show how you can take in inputs, okay? So you could take in inputs and you could define the inputs, for example, um, let's say one to take in one input. You could have commas in there, okay? Let's say x comma y, okay? So we could take in two different inputs. So when you're calling this function, you have to take two, it will ask for two inputs. Let me just use them here. Um, plus sine of x uh, minus log to base 10 of the absolute value of y. Okay, so um, just in case y is negative, so I try to put it in there. So now I'm going to use, in, use those parameters. So if I'm going to call this function, then I need to specify two inputs. Notice that MATLAB is the tooltip is already telling me I need two inputs, define two inputs. So let's say I say three and five send those in and now i get out my output and my outputs are different from what i had before so that's how to use matlab functions now while we're in here let me just show you one last thing immediately after your function definition you could have a bunch of comments let's say i put in a bunch of comments and say this function um, simply illustrates what a let me go to the next line function can look like let me leave two lines and put another comment here. I'm written for a uh, written as an example. Okay. Now go ahead and save. Why did I put that? Why did I put all of that in here? Let me show you. Let me come to MATLAB's command window and type help space sample function. Yes. When I put in these commands here, what I did was I just created a help file or a help entry 
for um, this particular function. Okay, I just created a help entry for this particular function. So that is how you can create um, help entries. Can you do this for a script? Let's copy this and, okay, I shouldn't probably just copy. Um, let's put, this is this function, so let's say scripts. And then let's change this also to scripts. Okay, so I go ahead and just say help sample scripts. Does it, does it work? Yes, it also does work, okay? Now, take note that all comments immediately after a function are treated as help. But once you have any empty line, that is the end of your help. So this does not show up as part of your help, okay? So you could put in more information if you want, but this will not show up. For example, if you're to put in things like copyright, some notes just for yourself, since you wrote the program, you could include them in there so that when next you pick up that function, you know exactly some other things that you're not interested in always showing as part of the help. One more question. If I type doc sample function, will that show up? in MATLAB's own help. Well, let's see. So it's searching for sample function and it's trying to show help on that. What happens? It's in there. So MATLAB actually does um, um, show you the whatever help it is you create yourself. It also is ready to display it in the sample in the, in the MATLAB documentation window. You will need to read some more on how to format it correctly and make it look even better, but I'll just leave that. I'll leave it at that for now. If you wanted to have this written as an example to show up in here, not, as long as you do not have an empty line, then it, it's all, it, it all is part of your, um, it all shows up, sorry, I press control S in the wrong place. It all shows up as part of your um, help. So let's go ahead and do help sample function. And notice the written example, written as an example also shows up. This empty line also shows up because it is also part of the comments, okay? It's part of the comments block. So it all shows up. Um, one thing, I'll just mention it here. I'll just go and type in. What I like about this is that you, I, I, when I got to this point, I pressed the return key. You don't have to. We could have just kept on typing. Let me as an example to illustrate how to create a help, help entry that MATLAB, once it gets to the end of the line, which is where we are right now, it automatically goes to the next line and it's a help which I can access, okay? So that's one beautiful thing, thing about typing help um, in, in MATLAB. It just goes ahead, once it gets to the end of that line, it just automatically um, wraps around to the next line and just get, goes on typing. That's actually a beautiful thing I like in, um, in the MATLAB environment. Okay, so I think that will be it for this video. Um, in this video, we've covered, covered the difference between MATLAB scripts and MATLAB functions. MATLAB scripts do not have a private workspace. They make use of MATLAB's workspace. MATLAB functions, on the other hand, have their own private workspace. Now, this is one reason why many times in scripts, you often will start by saying clear and maybe CLC so that um, it clears the workspace and it's only things defined inside this um, script that work. Um, sometimes you want to do that, but then you won't always have to do that. You, won't, you will not always do that and it's not always a good idea to do that. Um, earlier in, the, in, in this video, I also mentioned that when you want to create a new script or function, you could use the toolbars over here to create a script, or you could go ahead and type edit, edit space, and then the name of the file you want. I prefer using edit space and that name so that you will not inadvertently overwrite or um, create a, a file with a name that MATLAB already knows and knows how to find so that you don't end up running into confusion in the future. Thank you.